What's going on everybody? So today I thought I'd go over my different outdoor gear. I've had tons of people comment about this stuff, they're asking questions about what is this, where I got it, all that. So I thought, let's make a video where I can go through some of this, you guys can learn about it, you can pick it up for yourselves. Let's get started. Alright, so probably the piece of gear I get asked about most is my hat. I get tons of questions on this. What is this hat? Where did I get it? So on and so forth. This hat is called a Stetson Bariloche, and I absolutely love it. Stetson used to make these hats, but I don't believe they make them anymore. So you might be able to find one on eBay, you might be able to find one at some other place online, I don't know for sure. This is the hat that I bought, this is how it looked, I haven't modified it really in any way. Uh, I use it all the time, it's great at blocking the sun, it's an awesome hat, I get tons of compliments on it, and uh, I just like it, so I just wear it. <laughs> anyway, track it down if you want one, again, Stetson Bariloche, I think I originally I paid like $279 for it, which sounds really expensive, but if you know much about nice cowboy hats, that's really not very expensive, right? A nice cowboy hat will often run you a lot more than that. So anyway, I love this hat, it's held up really well. If you can track one down, definitely do. Next up is the water bottle. This one, you've probably seen in most of my videos, it's probably somewhere in the shop because I'm using it all the time. These are just metal water bottles that are made by a company called SIG. Uh, this is the Hudson Bay design, Hudson Bay being the old fur trading company. Yeah, it's a good water bottle, all right? There's nothing too fancy about it. It's got a lot of dents in it. Uh, I've used the hell out of this thing, uh, and it's held up pretty well. The only complaint I'd say is that these SIG water bottles, I find it a little bit annoying. Uh, you have to have a special brush to get in there and clean it. It's not so easy. Also, you get some grime around the top, right, on these caps. And so you can clean that off, but in time, you just want to replace it. So I've actually replaced my cap, I think, like two or three times over the years. As far as finding one now, I'm not sure if they still sell this design on the SIG website, but I think I originally found mine on eBay because they were sold out on the SIG website. So I definitely would check that out. I think I paid something like maybe 30 bucks for it. So go all right next up is my boots okay this is the LL Bean hunting shoe and I absolutely love these boots these are my go-to boots whenever I'm doing camping whenever I'm going canoeing when I go up to Canada it doesn't matter if I'm going in the outdoors these are my boots and they're absolutely fantastic and worth every penny uh, I got these from LL Bean and I think originally I paid 120 bucks for them now, L.L. Bean sells a bunch of different boots. Uh, probably the most popular one is called a duck boot. And a duck boot looks a lot like this. The difference, though, is it has kind of a harder insole on the inside. And so it doesn't really flex as much. Uh, but it gives you more foot support. But what I dig about this one is you don't have that at all. And what's cool, then, is that when you're walking around in the woods with these, you are completely silent. So it's great for hunting. It's great for just moving around and sort of not telling the world where you are. Right? So you can feel every twig underneath you. Uh, the rubber grips really well, so again, if I'm canoeing and I have to kind of move around the canoe, it doesn't slip or anything like that. Uh, it grips on wet rocks. I just love it. And the fact that these are waterproof as well, I can kind of kind of get in and out of water and I don't really have to worry about anything getting wet. So these things are, in my opinion, the absolute best boots. I wouldn't wear anything else. I love them. One of the coolest things about buying stuff from L.L. Bean too, particularly these boots, is that if anything happens to them, you can send them back and they'll repair them. And I've had to send mine in because I've done stupid things from time to time and I've punctured this rubber sort of sole uh, around the base here. What I do is I send it to L.L. Bean and I think it's like 30 bucks. Uh, and what they do is they take off the leather, they put a brand new rubber bottom on it, okay, sole, everything, all this brand new, and then they restitch your original leather back to the new sole. And so what's cool then is you still have your same boot, technically, right? The uppers are still the same, right? That leather that you've been working for years that have kind of molded to your ankle, all that's the same, but they just replace this bottom. I effectively get a new pair of boots whenever I send them in, but I keep right this leather that I've been working in for years. Uh, these aren't great for hiking, don't get me wrong. You're not going to get a whole lot of support on them. As far as just generally camping and maybe not having to walk long distances, things like canoeing, things like fishing in particular, man, these things cannot be beat. Hunting as well, I absolutely love them. All right, kind of sticking with apparel, this is my raincoat. You see me wearing this in a bunch of the canoeing videos. This thing's great. I've used this same raincoat for years. It's made by Columbia. It's just the Columbia Omnitech. It wasn't terribly expensive. I think I paid like 
man, maybe 50, up to $100. I'm pretty sure it was like 50 bucks though that I originally paid for it. I'm not sure what the price is now, inflation, but somewhere around 50 bucks that I paid for it. And this thing's been great. It's still waterproof. I've had this thing for, I don't even know how many years, uh, maybe 10 years, and it's still kicking the water right off me. Uh, fits well, it's light. I absolutely dig it. You can wear crap underneath it. It's not hot, it breathes, it's great. Now, a lot of people are wondering about like these things, the patches and stuff like that. So I go on these fishing trips up to Canada. You've heard me talk about this. I think I've shown a couple clips from time to time. Uh, at one point, I just added in red Velcro on both of the shoulders. And what we do is when we go up on these Canada trips, we make patches for each of these expeditions. And then these patches, I just slap on my shoulder. So these are just patches from different trips that we've taken up there, uh, different expeditions that we've done and I just kind of leave them on here. So this is the jacket. Again, that's a modification I made to the jacket. Uh, it still remained waterproof even after doing this, which is awesome. On my zippers as well, I attach these little Gerber tools. And so one of the tools is actually a flashlight, which works decently for little things that you have to do, right? If you're fiddling with something with your hands, but not so useful for like lighting your way. But better than nothing. Then on the other side, you got another Gerber tool, and this one just kind of folds out into a small knife. So having these tools on your jacket, it's just a fun little addition you can do. Uh, it's nice knowing, like, worst case scenario, if you ever needed to just use some sort of cutting device, well, there you go, you got a little knife. If you ever need a little bit of light, there you go, you got a little bit of light, right? It doesn't really take up any space. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to remember it. It's just with me if I'm out on the water, right? You're good to go. So there you have it. If you watch my videos, you'll notice I'm wearing the same pants in most of them. And these pants are Fial Raven Vita Pros. My wife actually bought me these pants for my birthday several years ago. And as soon as I started wearing them, I just fell in love with them. They're unbelievably rugged. They've held up to everything I can throw at them and I can't recommend them enough. Because they're a gift, I don't really know what my wife paid for them, but I think they're for sale now for somewhere around $150, which I get it, it's pretty expensive for a pair of pants, but I'm telling you, it's worth every penny. If you buy them and you try them, you're going to love them. All right, so since we're still talking about apparel, I want to talk about these pants. Now, you probably haven't seen me wear these pants in my videos, but this is one of my essential pieces of outdoor gear. This is a pair of pants made by Mountain Hardware, and they're called their compressor pants, and effectively, it's a sleeping bag made into a pair of pants. Whenever I'm going in the outdoors and I know it's gonna be really cold, I always bring these things along. So it's like a sleeping bag, but you can walk around in it, which is pretty cool. All right, something similar to that is called the Swagman Poncho. I love this thing. I take it camping with me every time I go. I bring it along in my dry bag when I'm going canoeing. I bring it along when I go fishing. And effectively, this thing is kind of like a sleeping bag poncho, but it can be used for all sorts of stuff as well. First, just being a waterproof insulated poncho. Second, being a blanket. And the third, you can zip this thing up and actually make it into a sleeping bag. I've been using mine for some time. I absolutely dig it. I think initially I paid something like 125 bucks for it. I think you can buy these on Amazon. You can buy these from, uh, I think it's Telecon, Helicon. Who the heck makes this thing? I think it's called Helicon Tex. So check it out. Hatchet. So this hatchet is by a company called Fiskers, who you might recognize. They actually make a bunch of scissors, so you've probably heard of them from that. But they make a damn good hatchet, believe it or not. So this is called the Norden N10, and I've been using this hatchet for years. It's kind of a neat combination, right? You've got the wood here, but then you've got kind of the modern composite. So it's got kind of a blend of traditional and modern. It's got a really good head on it. it stays unbelievably sharp. I rarely ever have to sharpen this thing. Uh, super useful. I love that it has this composite material here. So if I miss, not that I ever do when I'm chopping wood, but hypothetically, if I did miss, it's kind of neat that it all gets absorbed here, not directly on what would have been a wooden handle, which would tend to kind of split and crack that area. So this thing is really light. I love it. I've been using it a long time and I definitely recommend it. You can find these things online for somewhere between like 75 and 100 bucks. So I think a good price for what you're getting. It's held up really well for me. I definitely recommend it. Machete. So this bad boy is the 1966 Marmac. So this is US issued Vietnam machete. I've been using this thing since I was in high school. I actually found it at an antique shop uh, in Winter Park and I just fell in love with this thing. 
And so I use this primarily for kind of clearing out my campsite when I'm camping uh, or cutting through some really dense brush, kind of like you see in the movies. But you can actually track these down on eBay and they're not terribly expensive. Of course, price-wise, I have no idea. I bought mine at an antique store for $35. I actually still remember buying it. Uh, I would imagine that they're probably a little bit more today. This thing's held up really great. I dig it. It's a cool little piece and I use it all the time. So this is my belt knife. This is what I usually have attached to me when I'm out in the woods. This is made by a company called Heli. And they're based out of, I think, Norway. Really cool company. And this model is called the Heli Egen. And so I use this one quite a bit, like with all my gear. Been using it in a very long time. I love it. This thing weighs almost nothing. It's crazy how light this knife is. It's very comfortable. It stays very sharp. This model costs about 130 bucks. I think it's worth every penny. I've been using mine for a very long time, never had any issues with it, so I definitely recommend the Heli Egg. My big boy knife. So this one is probably one of the pieces of gear that I get the most questions about. And this is a monster. So this is called a Hudson Bay Chief Knife. It's made by a company called Montana Americana. There's a guy there named Dean Hazuka who makes some of the most beautiful and functional knives I've ever used. Dean actually went around to different fur trade museums to find the Hudson Bay knives that were used by the mountain men, that were used by these, uh, these fur traders, and he took very careful measurements of those knives, took a lot of pictures, came back to Montana, and he started building these replicas of these knives. And so this is one of them. And I use this thing constantly. Now don't get me wrong, this thing's like a boat anchor when you're wearing it on your waist, okay? But you just run your belt right through here, the belt goes over the top, and it just kind of hangs here. And it, it, it looks maybe a little funny at first, but there's a reason the mountain men used it. This thing works, and it works for almost everything. What's cool is that the mountain men didn't carry hatchets. Instead, they just used these knives, because these knives are so heavy. Right? They're, they have such weight to them, they're a quarter inch thick. These things are, they're still around. You can still find the original knots, right? They, they, they don't go anywhere, they don't break, and they usually don't even rust out. So these are just really utilitarian, functional pieces of equipment. If they were good enough for the mountain men, obviously they're good enough for us. The problem with these is that they're really, really expensive. But a lot of times in life, really high quality stuff is going to cost a lot of money. And when you pay a lot of money, you tend to appreciate that stuff even more. When I originally ordered this knife, I think I paid something like 475 bucks for it. So far and away, the most expensive knife I've ever bought in my entire life. Years later, looking back on the purchase, would I say it's worth it? 100%. Never regretted it. This thing is an absolute beast. I'm going to be able to hand this thing down to my kid. My kid's going to be able to hand it down to his kid. His kid's going to hand it down to his kid. This thing is heirloom quality, and I absolutely love it. It's cool, it's unique, it's original, and it's historical. Now, there is an alternative to this very expensive knife uh, made by Condor. And so Condor creates a knife, I think it's called the Hudson Bay knife. Not the same quality, okay? Taking nothing away from Condor, uh, but you're paying about a tenth of the cost. So obviously the materials aren't going to be the same, right? The workmanship, the craftsmanship is not the same. But if you're looking for a similar knife that can do, you know, basically similar things, but maybe aesthetically, you know, is it as historically accurate and, and maybe won't hold up the same way, but maybe it will. I don't know. I've never used one. Uh, but yeah, check out the uh, the Condor Hudson Bay knife. I've heard really good things about it. Um, I'm sure it's a, it's a solid knife based upon all the reviews I saw. And like I said, it's a fraction of the price of this knife. But if you're looking for something that's more heirloom quality, right, go with the Montana Americana. Now, for most of my outdoor videos, when I'm starting a fire, I'm starting with this little contraption in here. This contraption is made by a company called Uberleben. Uberleben makes some really cool outdoor stuff. And what this is is a piece of hemp and it's infused with paraffin wax. What you do is you slide it out the top of this sort of metal piece here as you spread it out at the top like so. Then you can use a ferro rod to strike, put sparks on the end, and this thing will just go up in flames. Then you can put this at the base of your sticks, get that fire going, and just pull it up and extinguish the flame. This thing's good to go. This is my go-to fire starter. You've seen me use it in a bunch of videos. I absolutely love it. I bring this thing everywhere with me when I'm going outdoors, when I'm going camping. Plus, you got this cool little metal, right, container to keep it in. It's not gonna get lost. It's not gonna get banged up. This thing's it's idiot proof. It's great, I love it. And it's cheap too. I think it's like 12 bucks. So the same company that makes a Tinderwick, Uberleben also makes all of my modern outdoor cooking stuff. 
So this is just called their Kessel Pot. Very simple, it's a steel pot, it's got a pour spout built in. What I dig about this pot though, is that it comes with this detachable handle. Screw this handle on, slap your lid on it, you're good to go, right? This handle doesn't take up much space because you can put it inside the pot. You can also hang the pot directly over the fire. You can run a stick through it and it balances itself out really well as well. Plus it comes with this wax canvas container. Very simple, I think these run 48 bucks on Uberleben. This thing has been thoroughly tested by me for years. I absolutely love it, so good stuff. Uberleben also makes a pack stove. Pack stove, if you aren't aware, it's just this mobile little stove that you can take with you when you go camping. This thing's super light, obviously it packs down into practically nothing. Put your tinder in there, you start your fire up, and there you go. It's called the Stoker Flat Pack Stove. It costs 48 bucks on Uberleben. Now Uberleben was nice enough to send me some new stuff. These guys are awesome. Absolutely love this company. Uh, and this is what they sent me, which I'm really pumped to try. And this is one of their Kessel Pots, but it's made out of titanium. And so I haven't used this one yet. Obviously I've used the crap out of my stainless steel one for years. Really cool of them to send me this. Thank you guys, I love it. Uh, I'm going to put this thing to use. <laughs> it's so much lighter than the stainless steel one. Having this as an option, being ultra light, that's pretty cool. I also love the fact that Uber Laban sent me this wooden spoon. Now, if you watch my videos, uh, you know the humor of me making the spoon. I've incorporated my stupid spoon that I carved that day into a bunch of different ones. Kind of as a, uh, a funny little homage, they sent me a wooden spoon, uh, which they said is going to be much more efficient for me to use rather than the one that I carved. So there you go, they got wooden spoons, they've got things that are called cooks, okay, which are wooden mugs, and I think this is like 24 bucks, right? Their prices are awesome, it's a sweet company, and uh, I can't recommend them enough. And I reached out to them before I made this video, which is why they sent me a bunch of this cool stuff too, because they knew that I was gonna recommend their stuff that I've been using for years, and they actually provided us with a custom promo code. So if you're watching this, you want to pick up any of the uber laden stuff, go to check out under the promo section, just type in Man vs. History 10, all caps. Man vs. History 10, you get 10% off of everything that you buy. And if you spend over 50 bucks, you'll get free shipping as well. So again, promo code Man vs. History 10. Thank you, uber laden. Very cool of you. All right, sticking with cooking stuff, this one is much more old and classic. This is called a round handled trivet. This is made by a company called Townsend's. If you don't know what Townsend's is, you need to check that website out. They're absolutely awesome. They make a bunch of old gear, cooking items, clothing from the 17 and 1800s. And so this is an oldie, but a goodie. You start a fire, you stick this out on top of the fire. You can put your skillet on top. You can cook with a nice, solid, firm base. So I do use this thing all the time. Even though it's something that was made hundreds of years ago, I still find tons of use for it. I do incorporate it in my videos, and I think I paid something like 65 bucks for it. All right, so this is what we boiled the tongue in, in the tongue video. This is also made by Townsend's as well. Yeah, look, it's heavy. It's obviously not ultra light. It's not super efficient, like you have with a bunch of the uber laden stuff. Uh, but you hang this bad boy over a fire, and you can cook things in a traditional way. I think it makes it taste really, really damn good, and it's a fun way of doing it. So I like incorporating some of this older stuff in as well. I think I paid 150 bucks for it. This thing's gonna last forever. I'm gonna be able to pass it down to my grandchildren someday, and it's fun to cook over, right? Just kind of sets a cool atmosphere when you're out there. So I definitely try to bring this along. I love it. This is your heavy duty fire set. These bad boys set up in the shape of a tripod, and this is what you hang your cooking pot from. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with these over the years. I really like them. Obviously, look, they're super heavy. They're really hard to transport, but if you're going somewhere and you don't have to hike too far to get in, they're really fun to bring, right? They kind of set the mood along with the cooking pot. I think originally I paid something like 90 bucks for these, and uh, again, bought them on Townsend's. My leather bag. Now, out of all the gear that I own, this is my favorite piece of gear, and this is the piece of gear that I use the most. It's made by a company called Saddleback Leather. I think it's called the Medium Briefcase. I just use it as a bag, and like I said, I use it for everything. So as a history professor, I use this around campus to haul my stuff around. I use it when I go canoeing. I bring this bag when I go out camping too. I love it. I just, I take it on airplanes with me. I take it everywhere. I get tons of compliments on it. When you go to uh, Saddleback Leather, their motto, it's one of the greatest mottos for a company, it's just, they'll fight over it when you're dead. 
I stocked these bags for a very long time online and then years ago I decided to pull the trigger and to purchase one. Even though I use this item more than anything else that I own, uh, it's also probably the most expensive item definitely on this table. But with that price comes quality. These things are guaranteed for your entire life. I think they have a hundred year guarantee, 100 years. So if anything breaks, okay, anything tears, any stitch comes out, you can send this thing back and they'll fix it. So you can use this bad boy as an actual briefcase, carry it around that way. I also love that it converts into a backpack as well. So when you're out hiking, it's pretty handy. You can take that strap off and then you can run that strap around the top here and you can convert it then kind of into a messenger bag, another way to carry it. So I, I just love that you can adapt it in so many different ways, right? That it can be kind of this professional bag that you can use when I have to go to work and I actually have to be professional, uh, but it's also a bag I can take in the woods with me, uh, and I have, and I do, all the time. Love it. All right, folks, hope this answers the questions that you have. If there's another piece of gear that you've seen in some of my videos that I didn't cover, just let me know down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. See you next time.